We're going to begin tonight in California where police believe they have solved one of the nation's enduring mysteries. They announced an arrest in the case of the Golden State Killer. DNA evidence led them to one of the country's most notorious serial killers. Joseph James D'Angelo was arrested yesterday. We've solved the case of the century. April the 24th, 2018. The deadliest American murderer of the 20th century is arrested. And as you can see, investigators are still pouring through this home here looking for evidence. The serial killer, who had been on the run for almost 40 years, was living quietly in the suburbs of Sacramento. Defense attorneys, everybody is gone. Sorry. Joseph James D'Angelo, you before the uh, Sacramento Superior Court for two reasons. One, a total of 51 rapes and 13 violent murders. In the 1980s, this man terrorized California, caused gun sales to skyrocket, and tormented generations of police officers. I'm really sorry. No one had ever been able to identify him until a police officer had a brilliant idea to track him down digging into the genetic data of millions of Americans, an innovative technique which combines big data and traditional genealogy, genetic genealogy. Think about this, the Golden State Killer case, for 44 years, 15 different law enforcement jurisdictions with the genealogy tool it took six of us four and a half months. Thanks to this technique, a so-called cold case is solved every week in the United States. The hiding places are taken away. They're, they can no longer hide and do their horrible deeds because we will find them and they have to know that. Around the world, we have technology and science at our disposal, thanks to huge DNA databases, which already include millions of Americans and Europeans. It would be possible to find anyone on the planet. How far can this wide-scale use of DNA data take us? If we can track killers, we could also track political dissidents, migrants, family relatives, or even yourself. This is not science fiction. This is the world that we can very clearly see coming in the near term. What must we sacrifice to make the world a safer place? Our freedom? Our privacy? Is the end of criminal activity worth it? In the United States, one killer after another is being tracked down. The American police have become masters of DNA identification. Paul Holes was the first one to try it. He has spent his entire career searching for the Golden State Killer, the dreaded Californian serial killer. He was a predator that was very sophisticated, highly intelligent, employed tactics uh, that uh, most, you know, serial rapists or serial killers don't employ. It's the second known attack by the East Area Rapist here in Modesto, and it occurred in the northeast part of the city, less than three miles from the site of the previous incident. This time it was a 15-year-old girl. Again, it was in a northeast Sacramento neighborhood. Again, he knew she was alone, forced his way in using a knife to threaten her, 
and raped her repeatedly for several hours. The 39th attack of the East Area Rapist took place in this very nice middle-class neighborhood. This time... We have a list of 13 homicide victims, 50 known attacks that he committed between June 1976 and July 1979 up in Northern California. So this was a very prolific offender. This was a man that was willing to go inside house in the middle of the night. And he's stand away from the bed, but wake the couple up. And he's shining a flashlight in their eyes so they can't see him at all. And he's telling them, I've got a gun. Often taking shoelaces out of uh, the couple's own shoes in their closet and adding more bindings to the man. Go through the house and come back with dishes or similar uh, kind of trinkets that he would stack on the man's back and basically tell the man, if I hear these rattle, she's dead, or I'll cut a part of her off and bring it to you, or I'll kill everything in the house if there were kids present. Then he would separate the woman out to the family room where he would sexually assault her. could be a highly trained military guy, but this guy sneaks into your bedroom and has a gun pointed at you, and you realize, you know, even if I try to make a move, he's going to shoot me. And unfortunately, down in Southern California, some of the men did try to go after him, and they were shot and killed. But once he starts attacking and once law enforcement realizes we've got a new and very dangerous rapist out there, they start forming task forces in Sacramento. They do proactive patrol. There's helicopters flying overhead. They're trying to catch this guy with everything they possibly can. And yet, East Area Rapist was still able to attack in those very areas where law enforcement is trying to catch him and escape and get away. He's not the man. If there's more than one, we've still got a lot of work to do. These communities to completely change their lifestyle. The communities are forming um, neighborhood watches where now you have groups of men who are wandering around the neighborhoods at night trying to do their own patrol to augment what law enforcement was doing. Uh, they are buying guns. And so now everybody was paranoid. In 1986, the attack stopped. The killer seemed to have settled down, but Paul Holes didn't give up. 